time to practice what we preach. Time to practice what we preach. You start with the nose first, I'll start with the nose first. There we go. Let's get it in there. Rub a little cheeks. Let's go. Get your cheek. I'm Dr. Eric Siddiqui. I'm here with my good friend, veteran family physician, Dr. Mario Alaya, and today we're gonna talk about sunscreens. So there's two main risk factors for photo aging of our skin over time. Number one is smoking, and number two is chronic exposure to the sun. So ultraviolet radiation has been well studied over the years, and we know that chronic exposure to UV rays has been associated with cancer, immune suppression, sunburns, among other health risk factors. So when it comes to skin cancer, there are three main types of skin cancers. There are uh, basal cell carcinomas, squamous cell carcinomas, and melanomas. And we know that ultraviolet radiation through uh, sun exposure does increase the risk of all three, contrary to what you might hear in, on some social media circles. We know that sunscreens do reduce the risk of all three as well. Uh, there's good evidence from the uh, Journal of Clinical Oncology that uh, sunscreen reduces the risk of melanoma and um, evidence from the Lancet from 99 that showed that it uh, reduced the risk of squamous cell carcinomas. So the importance of sunscreen to reduce those uh, cancers that we see in clinical practice, unfortunately, every day. And a lot of those cancers, basal cell and squamous cell, keep a lot of family docs and general surgeons busy on lump and bump day when we remove them over time. And a lot of people, unfortunately, can have a number of these questionable lesions removed over time. So there's two kinds of ultraviolet rays, UVB and UVA. UVB have the shorter wavelength, and those are the ones that cause your classic sunburn. Then there's UVA rays. They have the longer wavelengths, penetrate deeper into the skin, and cause DNA damage. Both UVA and UVB have been linked to skin cancers. That's why it's important to use a broad spectrum sunscreen to protect yourself from your risk of skin cancer. Next we'll talk about SPF, or sun protection factor. So what it means is essentially, say on a given day, the UV index tells you that it'll take 10 minutes to, uh, to, get, uh, to get a burn. An SPF of 15 sunscreen on that day would extend that out to 150 minutes. So the higher the SPF, the better protection you get. What's typically recommended uh, by dermatologists is an SPF of 30 or greater, and really an SPF of 30 should be sufficient. It's important to note that the difference between an SPF of 30 and an SPF of 50 really is minimal. And it's more important to actually apply the sunscreen every two hours than, a, than having a higher SPF. I agree. If you're going to be outside for a couple of hours, take a break and reapply. So there's two kinds of sunscreen components, physical blockers and chemicals that absorb the UV rays. Your physical blockers are like shields that reflect off the UV rays. That includes zinc oxide and titanium dioxide. The other kinds of sunscreen are chemical um, uh, sunscreen. So essentially what chemical sunscreens do is they take the UV radiation and they convert it into, uh, into heat uh, to dissipate the energy. So Dr. Mario, I get this question a lot in clinic from patients. What is the best combination for a sunscreen? It's a really good question. So when you look at physical and chemical sunscreens, uh, both are effective. What's most important for, from a consumer standpoint is to find uh, a broad spectrum sunscreen that's been approved, that has an SPF over 30, because realistically, every one of those sunscreens that's approved will have components that will cover your, your spectrum, whether it's a physical or a chemical barrier. If you're wondering which specific products to buy, check below and I'll make sure I post a list of approved ones for you. Unfortunately, there is a lot of myths that still run around regarding sunscreens. So the first myth we'll address is uh, a yearly report that some of you may have seen from something called the Environmental Working Group. And this group puts together a list every year of the sunscreens to avoid. And the reason they, they cite is their concerns about uh, two chemicals in particular, oxybenzone and retinal palmitate, uh, which they claim causes uh, harm in humans. So they point to studies done in mice uh, and the studies that they point to were huge amounts of oxybenzone that were given to mice that caused uh, some cancers, but like we know, the dose makes the poison. And studies done in humans to date, including a study done uh, through the European Union, have shown no harm to oxybenzone, which is why it's still allowed in sunscreens in both Europe and North America. Conveniently on the group's website, they actually sell sunscreens, uh, and pr quite pricey ones. And some of you may see some uh, multi-level marketing sunscreens that cost up to 50 bucks for a small 150 mil bottle. When we tell you to put sunscreen on, we have you put 30 mils or a shot glass to cover your body. Those are the current recommendations. So you figure, family of five, out to the beach, 150 mils of sunscreen is one application for the whole family. We know that if you buy an expensive sunscreen, you're more likely to use less of it. You're gonna underdose, which is a big problem. We know that the average person 
probably underdose the sunscreen, puts on about a quarter of what they should be putting on, which really only gets you to about 50% of the UV production. So if you're out to the beach with Bill and Melinda Gates and can afford a really expensive sunscreen, great. But for most of us, um, pick the, um, the least expensive sunscreen so you can actually apply it liberally uh, and get the best effect. Now, being evidence-based physicians, we couldn't resist. We had to talk about some of the myths that float around our social media, including up north of the border here in Canada. There are some claims regarding putting oils on your skin in the heat of the day to protect yourself from skin cancer. Unfortunately, there really is no evidence. The SPF factor of coconut oil, for example, is eight. The SPF factor of sesame oil is two. Uh, I was able to find a paper on essential oils uh, describing the SPF factor for one particular product, and it was 12 to 14 definitely doesn't meet the muster of the other products unfortunately and I, I would not recommend it. I also had to touch on something a little close to my heart. Having worked in the fitness industry for 10 years as a fitness competitor, a lot of my colleagues would tan to prepare for shows and photo shoots and unfortunately there's a reason why tanning beds are banned for people less than 18 years of age in various provinces. There's a strong link between exposure in tanning beds and skin cancer and photo aging. I definitely wouldn't recommend it. So to summarize, if you're going to be out in the sun, find yourself a good sunscreen with an SPF of 30 or above, a broad spectrum sunscreen, put it on 15 minutes before you go out into the sun, and apply 30 mils or a shot glass full to, to uh, cover your entire body. Uh, it doesn't matter whether you get a physical or a chemical sunscreen, both are safe, um, but find one that's inexpensive that you uh, can apply it liberally and not worry about the cost. And ideally, try to avoid those peak hours of the day between 10 a.m. and around 2 or 3 o'clock in the afternoon. And if you have to be outside for multiple hours, don't forget to reapply. So thanks for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed this first video. If you like the content, give us the thumbs up. Please subscribe below so you'll get a notification every time we post a new video. And leave your questions in your comments. We'll see you in the next video. I feel right. I think I'm going to go the whole shot glass just on my face. I think I should go to clinic like this tomorrow. At least I'm protected from the sun when I walk in. I think I'd be allowed on general surgery service tomorrow like this for morning rounds. You smell nice. At least I'll smell nice. With an SPF of 30 or above. Uh, let's try it one more time. Let's up. By the way, can you take my pager for the night? <laughs> While you're here, any pages are your responsibility. <laughs>